and we are continuing our series praying through the Bible and tonight we are going to be talking about the book of Psalms how many chapters are in the book of Psalms 150 yes. that's right yes and we're gonna and we're gonna go Pastor Lupina is gonna go through all 150 tonight <clears throat> so we got a special special presentation for you again thank you Thank you for being here. We appreciate you being here to recharge your spiritual batteries during the middle of the week. It's always a great opportunity that God gives us where we can gather together in his name. And remember, we want to hear your praises and your prayer requests here at the church. Uh, please send those to prayer at nhumc.org so we can lift those up on Tuesday mornings. And if anybody is interested in being part of our prayer team, please send an email also to prayer at nhumc.org so we can get the information that you need. If you feel comfortable where you, are, where you are and you have a praise report that you want to say out loud, go ahead and do so at this time. And that includes you guys right here. If you have a praise report you want to say out loud, please do so. If you have a prayer request that you feel comfortable, go ahead and say that out loud right now also. If you had a praise report, Lord, we give you praise. Praise, praise God. Mm -hmm. If you had a prayer request, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Glorious and gracious God, we just give you thanks for this time to we, where we can come together and gather in your name. Father God, may we honor and glorify you. May we just try to honor you in our words and deeds each and every day. Uh, we again thank you for this time in your word, Father God, and thank you for all your blessings. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so in the book of Psalms, I'm just going to cover a couple of things real quick before Pastor Lupini gets started. But we're not going to cover all 150, obviously. Um, but I am going to tell you how many prayers total. There was 129, 128 total prayers in the whole book of Psalms. Make and request known there was 66 Praising God, 44. Seeking God's will, 2. Praying for others, 6. Confessing sin, 1. Thanksgiving and gratitude, 5. Verses about prayer, 2. Blessings and benedictions, 2. Responding to God, 1. Um, chapters in the book of Psalms with no prayers. There are 38 chapters with no prayer in the psalm itself, according to our book. <clears throat> and also, I find it kind of... Interesting that out of 128 prayers, only one was confessing sin. I, f I found that to be just kind of interesting. <clears throat> out of mm -hmm. all the prayers, only one confessing sin, and we know we're all sinners all the time. So, Not all the time, I shouldn't say that, I'm sorry. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. that's what we have as far as prayers are concerned in the book of Psalm. And now I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Lupina. <laughs> well, Psalms is actually one of the best books in relationship to prayer, um, precisely because you can say that while these author is assigning not all of them as prayer, they actually almost are our prayer. Um, that's one of the things I like about this book of Psalms. But there is some specific things that actually, while we were checking on this book, I'm going to see if the, uh, the slides are connected. Um, I'm going to ask Abby if he can check that one so I can be sure that we can show those. But one of the things with the book of Psalms is that they are intentional prayers and we can see that there are all these different expressions we have been going through the book of psalms during our sunday worship services as you have remembered that um, we can focus that in many different directions we can focus about the emotions we can focus about god we, but there is a lot that the book of psalms always carries with us so one of the things is that i want to share with you uh, one of the ideas um, i don't know if uh, Abby, can you? Yeah, great. Thank you. So Psalms, this is one thing that I really like from St. Augustine. It says, if the Psalms praise, you pray. If the Psalms lament, you lament. If the Psalms exalts, you rejoice. If it hopes, you hope. If it fears, you fear. Everything written here is a mirror for us. So I actually encourage you to do that. It's like give permission. To, like if you read a Psalm, give permission to yourself to say, that emotion that the psalm is allowing me to have, I'll have it there. And it's a great opportunity. I can tell you, uh, as counselors, one of the things they tell is you have sometimes to put in your life time to say, I'm going to almost schedule some time for me to grieve right now. I'm going to be intentional about it. 
I have or other times when you say, I'm gonna have time for myself just right now to enjoy the moment. Like we, we do things like that. Psalms can direct you in that process too. But what is beautiful is precisely what we have been learning on Sunday mornings is that the psalm validates your emotion, but you bring that emotion to God. And through that, you are able to handle that emotion in a sacred space. So Psalms are exactly what they are doing that. So how do you read them? What are ways to read it? One uh, person, I like how they do that. And actually, I think that's one time we did it, something like that, is where read the Psalm of the day, but you need to remember it's 150, so you assign those days. So today is the 15th of February, so that's why I assigned this Psalm, because uh, poor uh, Herschel, he's trying to figure it out. What Psalm are we studying? And I'm like, is it Psalm of the day? Because uh, it's a lot. And uh, I could literally, we could go 150 um, talks about prayer, and maybe that will be a great topic later in another time for every single psalm. But I'm going to invite you just to open your Bible on Psalm 15. And we're going to read it together, and we're going to take some uh, places where we're going to stop about it. So as you can see, it is a prayer, because look how it starts. The first word, what is it? Lord. Lord, Lord who may... Dwell in your sacred tent. Who may live in your holy mountain? This is a very unique request to God. There are two key words in this part, dwell and live. And especially they are key because of where, where is that location. So he's saying, who may dwell where? In the tent, right? Now remember, no one stay in the tent. The tent was just uh, and, and we're talking about the tent where when the people of God were moving from one place to another and they had the tabernacle and they had that tent that was like their moving church, as we will say. But who were the only ones capable to go inside? It was just the priest. For how long? It was just there on specific period of time. It was like a specific call. They will go representing everybody, but never expected that the priest could stay there as, I mean, all the time. He will go specifically on the season of the ritual, and he will present the sins of the people, or he will present the request of the people. So this is a very wild, bold request. Who can dwell in your sacred? Dwell means staying forever. As I have shared with you that word, I, every single time that I see my four cats, when they took, because maybe you do not know, or you don't have cats, or maybe your cats behave. But my cats, they take over my bed. And I'm, I don't know if it's a Mexican issue or something, but they, they take over and they expand themselves. And there is no way to move them. Literally, there is no way to move them. And uh, I'm trying to kick them, and they just look at me, you know, and they dwell. Let their entire weight there, like I'm not moving. So it's kind of a good reminder. Every time they do that, I remember, God, I want to dwell in your presence. So that's the meaning. And then the other one, too, is kind of a bold statement. Who may live where? In the holy mountain. What happened is like, remember with Moses. He went to that mountain and when he brought that opportunity of listening to God. But as you remember, he went there to learn all these different uh, messages that he needed to bring to the people of God, but it wasn't expected for him to stay there. But this psalm reminds us there is something special that happens when you are in the presence of God. There is something special that you say, I don't want to leave this space. Now we are now moving on Christians and after the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to remember that dwelling and living before God's presence for us is where and when. Everywhere all the time. It's a blessing that we receive. But then also something else happens in here, and we need to read this psalm very carefully because it can be misunderstood. So this one is telling us, you're going to dwell, I want to be in that presence, I want to live in that presence, but then there is a reaction to that life that you have in the presence of God and dwelling before God. And we have to be intentional in here. When you read the next verses, you need to be very careful of reading this more from a picture perspective than a prescription perspective. Why is this important? 
picture reflects something that already is. You take a picture of yourself, that's who you are. Prescription is something that you are taking to get there. Does it make sense? Like if I take all these medicines, the older I get, the more that you learn medical terms. So the prescription <laughs> takes you to a place, right? <laughs> Just wait. And uh, so that takes you to a place where you will be healthy. The expectation in here is don't take it as a prescription because if not, it sounds like a checklist that you have to follow. You take it more as, God, my purpose of this prayer is that I live that life. And because I'm living that life, this is happening to me as a consequence of living that life that I'm dwelling with God. So what are those consequences? And we go with the verses. No, number two, what it says, the one who's walk in blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart. And I, I like this verse, and what he's talking about, who walks in, whose walk is blameless, is not talking about a person who never does a mistake. It's talking more in that if you go to the right translation, is the one whose walk is with integrity. It's a person of integrity, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart. So a person that is dwelling with God will have that life that walks blameless. Then on verse 3, whose tongue, what? Others no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor and casts no slur on others. I mean, that's a difficult word for me, slur on others. Who despises a vile person, but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath. This is very powerful, even when it hurts. Have you ever heard that? I mean, that's a heavy thing, even when it hurts and does not change their mind. Like, again, it's, it's yes is yes, no is no. Who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things will never be shaken. So what kind of prayer is this? This is exactly what I was saying. This is a prayer of integrity as a consequence of dwelling in God's presence. So one of the things is this prayer gives us the opportunity to say, God, today I want just to be in your presence. And I want to be able to become so involved with your love, so being embraced by your truth, that my behavior will change. My reaction to this world will change. The way I see things will change. So today, you who are at home, as well as you who are here, I'm going to invite you to just take a moment to dwell in God's presence, to be in God's presence. And we're going to pray for that right now. And we're going to accept what God wants to give us in that word. So let us pray. I want to ask you this while you are praying. What is, what, how are you coming to this place? Are you coming empty? Are you coming full? Are you coming in gratitude? Are you coming with questions? Regardless of how you are coming, just think that right now, you are in the presence of a God who is a God of abundance. Abundance of love, abundance of forgiveness, abundance of power, abundance of restoration. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're coming to your presence in this day. And as the Psalm was saying, there is nothing else that we wish but to be dwelling in your presence, to live in the place where you are. And God, we come, all of us today, from different places and stories and situations and emotions, from different places of crisis or joys. And with all of that, God, right now, we want to be in your presence. We want to be able to receive from you the love that you have provided for all of us. We want to receive from you the forgiveness that we need so our soul can be restored. We come before you, God, bringing to you probably some things that are so heavy, God, that we are not even sure how can we continue moving. But precisely, we're bringing them to your presence because you are the only one who has promised 
that if we come to you, if we are having burdens, that you will take that from us. And God, we are bringing to you every single need and circumstance that we are facing. God, but we are also wanting to dwell in your presence because we know that in that place, we find ourselves in the best place that we can be. We find ourselves also responding to this world and equipped to respond in the best way we can. So today, Lord, allow us to really, after we finish even this time in this uh, sanctuary, help us to stay in that presence. Bring us back to that place. Allow us to rest before you, God. And I pray that every person that is here and is watching online can physically feel how you are lifting their spirit up, how that you are taking all of those things that are making them feel down and you will take that from them and you will give them the opportunity of breathing and restoring their lives. We pray, God, that also through this time, when we go out and we look at our neighbor, our friend, when we look at the people that is surrounding us, when we are just in this community, let us see that community as people that are in rested and dwelling in you so that we interact with them as a way to reflect to others your love. We pray all of this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you right now, if there is a gratitude, a word of gratitude, can you write it down in our chat? Or would you please um, just say, what are you thankful for today? The scriptures. 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 Amen. Scriptures. Great. Church time. Church time. Mm -hmm. Prayer time. Prayer time in church. <laughs> Computer nerds. Computer nerds, yes, I appreciate them a lot. Fellow Christians. Fellow Christians. Good. Ma'am? She said the church. The church, good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're thankful for that. I am thankful, I honestly thankful for the spirit of giving that this church has. And I know the total for the cans of soup. I am not going to tell you until Sunday. <laughs> but they tricked me in the office saying, Lupina, we didn't make it. And I was like, what? But then they were like, just kidding. But I'll tell you more. I tell you, you need to be connected on Sunday because it's really, I can tell you that it is one of the biggest joy is to be your pastor of a church who responds in this way. I am honored by that and thankful with you. Mm -mm. This church steps up to the plate. I was telling yeah. Pastor Lupina before we got started that mm -hmm. <clears throat> I've never been part of a congregation that steps up in love through money, their time, gifts, witness, what we say yes. we're going to do with our service and everything that we have. I've never been anywhere so loving and giving mm -hmm. as Northern Hills United Methodist Church. Yes, and yeah. we praise God for that, and we're careful okay. in what we offer it that time. So we're presenting this gratitude to the Lord. Are there prayer requests that we need to present to the Lord? Sherry. 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 And we have one online. Yes, Lane Victor has hmm. fractured her L5 and L4. Oh. Lane Victor fractured her L5 and L4 and, yes, discs. Yes, she cannot work again until February 27th, and this is unpaid. Out of work until February 27th, oh unpaid. That's, That's a lot of problems yeah. across the board. We're going to pray for yeah. that. Many of you probably are going to hear tomorrow, but also you're going to probably have heard. Our sister Joanne Revels uh, passed away uh, on Sunday. And uh, her funeral will be not tomorrow, but next Thursday at 12.30 here. So just so you know. And uh, we will be praying for her, but I also invite you to pray for her sister and her mom in this time too. So. Any other prayer request? My friend Bobby. Bobby. She's septic. Septic, okay. We'll pray for Bobby. Good. Christian? A neighbor who struggles with anxiety. We're going to pray for a friend of Christian who's uh, dealing with anxiety. And that's a big situation for many people right now. You know, Mary, are you going to say something? No. 
pray. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to your presence with our gratitude and our prayer request. We present our gratitude as a testimony that we say this is not happening just by coincidence, but we believe that when you answer prayers is the way that we can see that you're moving and you're real and alive. We even are thankful, God, that sometimes you have answered to us with the word no. And in the moment, probably, God, we complain and we don't understand, but it's an answer and there is a purpose in that answer. But we're thankful for all of the celebrations and places where we have seen you moving in our lives. God, but we also bring to you our prayer requests. You have heard the situations that people are dealing with health and with, especially with health situations. And also when we need to have a person we love grieving uh, because of the death of someone that we love. And any other prayer requests that you know that we're keeping in our heart, we present them to you, God. And we don't asking for them to all be yes, but we're asking God that in each of them, your will be done. In that way, God, we are sure that your answer will be the perfect answer for that situation. And God, we just give you thanks for Northern Hills United Methodist Church. This congregation, God, has been a place where we have seen that your kingdom of God is in this place. And God, we submit ourselves as members of Northern Hills to your spirit. So you continue using, you, using us for your glory. Give us wisdom and discernment to continue following you every single day of our lives. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Lupina, on that 150 Psalm message. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, remember uh, to check out everything that we have going on here at the church through all of our uh, social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. And check out the uh, church's webpage, nhumc.org, so you can find out about all the stuff that's going on here at the church. We have, on Wednesday nights, we have a lot of stuff going on, Bible, a lot of Bible studies after this service here. Uh, a lot of stuff going on for the kids, so if you want to get your kids plugged in, you can go and check out the events calendar and see everything that's going on here at the church. And um, I, again, want to uh, plug in the fact that we do or we would like people to join our prayer team. Mm -hmm. um, we've had several people leave for different reasons, whatever the reasons were. Um, and so we would like to just build that team back up. And if you think that you might be a prayer warrior and you think that God might be calling you, please send us an email and let us know. And we will, it's a short, we have a short devotional of about 10 minutes and then we lift up all the prayers and praises of the congregation. So it only takes 30 minutes total. We don't go past 30 minutes because we know that people have other things that they got to be doing. So we get what we got to get done and then we get on about our day. So if you might be interested, please send us an uh, uh, email. Also, Blessing of the Bikes is coming up again uh, March 25th this year. It's going to be in Bandera, Texas at Bandera United Methodist Church during the Thunder in the Hill Country Motorcycle Rally. We do need volunteers to help mingle with the bikers, uh, hand out or talk about information about the church. Um, maybe hand out breakfast tacos and that kind of thing. So please send an email. This is a different email. H-A-Krigbaum, K-R-I-G-B-A-U-M at yahoo.com. And I will get the information to you that you would like to have about Blessing of the Bike. So we're excited about it. It's going to be a big one this year. Mm -hmm. So um, The only other thing I want to remind you is that next Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. So we're going to gather together in the yes. worship uh, center, and I invite you to come. We're going to provide ashes to everyone, and we're going to have ashes to go the whole morning here from um, 8.30 to like 9.15, and then also at the ministry center during the morning, but at 6.30 is when we're having our worship service all together. So. And again, thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you online for being here. We look forward to seeing you all next week. Uh, same time, same place. So. Mm -hmm. Everybody online, good night. It was good to see you. Thank you for being here. And please stand and join me in this benediction. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good night, everybody. See you next week.